So my mom is taking me to the doctor today because I think that I have some kind of infection in my pelvis and definitely in my incision sites, all red and puffy and hurts. My whole stomach hurts. So we're going in there today and then tomorrow I'm gonna meet with my, my radiation oncologist at 11 and my younger brother's coming with me. And then at 1.45 I'm talking to my gynecological oncologist and <clears throat> he's talking to the tumor board today to figure out a plan for me. I went to not my oncologist yesterday, but his PA who was awesome. Her nurse was awesome. And I just wanted to be looked at because my scar was, or has been really red and painful and like very hard in this one area. And there's like this bright red circle around it. And also I thought I felt a, like a lump um, in my groin area. So I just wanted her to feel that and look it over and make sure that she didn't see anything. And everything looked good. She sent me down to get blood work. My blood work came back fine, so there's no infection, which is, or at least there's nothing coming up on my blood work. So then I am going to get a CT scan. Hopefully today, if they can squeeze me in. Right, I have an appointment for Wednesday the 21st, and this is just kind of a peace of mind CT scan because I just wanna make sure that there's nothing else going on down there because I've been having so much pain and fatigue, like, I've been so tired, but I also could have one of the bugs that's going around and everybody's getting. So today I am going to go meet my brother at the hospital and we are gonna meet the radiation oncologist and go over whether or not I can have radiation. And then I will maybe get my CT scan. I have a virtual appointment with my gynecological oncologist and he met with the tumor board yesterday so we are going to discuss my plan and my treatment plan so i'm a little nervous i'm kind of feeling excited oddly enough um just because i want to know what's going on yeah so it's it's feeling realer and realer i don't feel like i'm living in this like dystopian reality anymore i see kind of the beginning of the next stage and tonight i'm gonna go meet my friend at a night market she's doing it's this huge market in seattle and i forgot to sign up for it but it's fine because i probably wouldn't have even been able to do it um because i don't feel very well but uh, i'm gonna help her for a little while and just check it out because i'll want to do it next year or see if i want to do it next year So I was gonna go run errands today, finish up some Christmas shopping, but the weather was not working in my favor because it's snowing. And it was snowing a lot, like golf ball sized snowflakes. I don't think my little car 
would do too well in the snow. Uh, we'll see. I might still go. I might risk the weather and go. That's what I get for waiting until the last minute to do all of my Christmas shopping. Where did I leave off? Treatment steps. I met with the radiation oncologist and I talked to my gynecological oncologist and then I had another CT scan. And this was on Friday last week. It is now Tuesday. This is what I know. So after talking with the radiation oncologist, he still didn't have a very clear plan um, as to what was next. So I'm 100% clear if I can do radiation again because I did it in 2017 on my left groin. Currently he is getting all of my information from UCSD, which is down in San Diego, which is where I did my last treatment. He needs to do a little analysis just to see if I can do radiation. Although my gynecological oncologist was very clear that this was a very uncommon cancer. I've had a hysterectomy and it's endometrioid carcinoma. So it's within the uterine, ovarian, and peritoneal cancer if that makes sense. It doesn't make sense to me. My gynecological oncologist said that there wasn't really a standard protocol because this isn't a very common situation. One that looks like this is radiation with a small dose of cisplatin chemotherapy. But if I can't have radiation because it's too dangerous, because I've already had it in that area, then I will do two chemotherapies, a cocktail of chemotherapies, I think still just for five weeks. So radiation, treatment option number one is radiation for five weeks with once a week cisplatin, which is like an hour and a half long appointment. If I can't do radiation, will be a cocktail of chemotherapies. I know one of them is Taxol, which makes you lose your hair, but he feels comfortable giving me, I think it's Doxy, something with a D like Doc something, which doesn't typically make you lose your hair. So I know that people are very opinionated about this and that I shouldn't care, but I really do not want to lose my hair. And if it can be prevented without being a great risk for me, then I feel really grateful towards my doctor for being open to doing that. I know my doctor is gonna do what is best for me. With that being said, if it came to a life or death situation, there's Louie. Hey, you want to be in this? If it was life or death, I'm going to get the taxol and I will deal with it. So that's what I'm going to do. So those are the two options. I'll probably know after the holidays are over. The radiation oncologist said, regardless, I wouldn't be starting until mid to late January anyways, because I'm only five weeks post-op. And so I need a couple more weeks of healing. So yeah, I think having these appointments made all of this feel a lot more real now and like okay I, I I don't know I don't feel like I can say I have cancer because he removed the only visible cancer but I don't know if microscopically somewhere I do have it so it's a weird place to be in when I talk about it with people the last couple days I was definitely feeling a little bit depressed and just really low energy yesterday I slept all day today I feel better I'm in like painting clothes right now because I'm working on the laundry room makeover which hopefully I'll have out in two weeks for you. I don't know. Definitely been wrestling with just feeling really scared and I guess because I've done radiation before I I know what to expect. Never done chemotherapy. I only heard stories of it and so it's really nerve-wracking to think about having to do that I know I have to do it one way or another and so I'm having to work on really turning it into a more positive experience for myself not that chemotherapy is ever positive but I have to look at it as you know this is something that is potentially going to save my life and kill off any remaining cells that might be lingering that we can't pick up on you think the snow is beautiful it is huh are you appreciating the snow for now i am just going to enjoy the holidays with my family and friends and the new year and just take it one day at a time if i can do radiation then i'll need to go get my little radiation tattoos they give you these three tattoos where they line you up every day uh, so radiation will be five weeks 
every day, five days a week, and then I'll have chemotherapy one day. So hopefully I can get that appointment together. And so I'm not having to go and come back and then go again. I can do anything for five weeks. When he told me five weeks, that was kind of like, that was a relief for me. That's a month and a week. That's nothing in the grand scheme of treatment options. Most of the time people are doing chemotherapy for three to six months. Five weeks is nothing. And it's really the perfect time of year because I don't tend to do a ton of markets in January and February. And I wasn't really even gonna do them this year because the ones that I did do last year were so slow for me. And I can kind of work on getting my strength back and energy back in March. And then maybe April, May onward, I can get back into the market world and just continue working on healing. I think that something that maybe I should do a whole video on that is really important to talk to is that just because you're done with cancer treatment does not mean that you are done healing from cancer. The physical and mental and emotional effects of cancer long-term are debilitating. And for me, you know, I have my previous experience with radiation. It's actually caused a lot of long-term effects for me. I have a lot of chronic pain. I have falling in my leg um, occasionally called lymphedema. I just have chronic pain. I had a pretty severe burn that scarred. And also there are risk factors of getting other secondary cancers from radiation. So that is a big reason why they don't know if I can do it again as well. There's just a lot to think about. I think one of the hardest things is like not knowing when all of this is gonna start. I feel like I have no control over planning my life for January, February, March, and forward even. I think that I could probably start to sign up for some maybe late spring markets, but I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen when they were scan me. I did have my CT scan and they did find a four centimeter lesion in my pelvis that's full of fluid. It's not as concerning. It's most likely just an abnormality from surgery that will clear up on its own. Obviously it's still alarming. I had a fairly large cystic and solid mass removed from my pelvis a month ago. I knew that something was going on because I was feeling a lot of the same pain that I had been feeling prior to surgery. So I'm really glad that I had that scan, but I will say that the pain has subsided. So maybe the lesion resolved itself. Maybe it was just fluid. Maybe I did think that I had that infection, even though my blood work came back that I didn't. I don't know. There's a million things that could happen, but I feel better. I don't have very much pain anymore. So that is really great. Still sleeping a lot during the day. I'm just really tired. I think that's just part of this process and will be especially when I'm in treatment. I am trying to not watch as much TV and I, I'm starting to read. I'm wondering if you would want me to do a video on my favorite books to read when I'm going through these bigger life situations. And there are some books that I find absolutely life-giving and I come back to over and over again when I'm going through various things. So let me know in the comments if that would be something you would love to hear. That's that's what I know so far. Just gonna wait for them to get a hold of me and trying hard not to think about it too much. Keep moving forward as best as I can and enjoy the holidays and my family and friends and then cross that bridge when I get there next month. That's all I can do. Again, I am so grateful for your support being here. If you haven't subscribed already, I would love for you to do so. If this kind of content resonates with you, hit the thumbs up bell to be notified of future videos and we'll see what comes up next week. I've been pretty good about posting weekly, so I think that this schedule works well for me. I don't know that I could do any more than one video without somebody else helping me edit. For now, this is working. I'll see you next time.